It's 7 p.m. on Wednesday, February 15th, 2017. I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, February 15th meeting of the Revere Conservation Commission. Uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, roll call. Member Vince Luria? Yeah. Member Joseph Lavalli? Yeah. Member Nick Malason? Here. Yeah. Member James Saboni? Here. And I'm Andrew B. DeSantis, Chair. A member Ann Raponi is absent. Uh, first item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for a DEP file number 061-0688-205 Revere Beach Parkway. Uh, Mr. Lentini is here to uh, present on the behalf of the applicant. Would you come up to the podium, turn the mic on, and inform us uh, what has transpired since uh, meeting on February 1st. Okay, uh, once again, good evening. I'm Rick Lentini with Howard Stein Hudson. Um, the applicant should be here. I'm guessing the rain has slowed them down, the trip from up. I think I see him come, yep, coming up the stairs now. So, um, uh, I mean, I'll go I'll, up. Here we go. Uh, so once again, this is uh, Rick Latini. Uh, this Good is evening. Uh, Liz Bejo and Steve Perdue. They both represent the applicant, 205, 205 Revere Beach Parkway Partners, LLC. Uh, you guys know the site well, I'm sure. It's the old Shaw's site. Uh, I think Shaw's been vacant for about six years now. So that building's about a 45,000 square foot building. There's a, with a 166,000 square foot parking lot. We're demoing all that to build a five-story hotel with uh, 132 keys in eight covered spots, as well as a six-story 195 unit residential building, which will have 59 garage spaces. And then there's an additional 231 surface spaces. We're actually reducing the parking lot that's out there today. The one out there today has between like 320 and 330 spaces. Um, so, um, as you know, we've been uh, working with MassDP. Um, we, uh, with the new FEMA flood maps, we've had to raise the buildings and we've graded down towards the creek as fast as we could, but we still have the need for a retaining wall. And we've been working with the um, MassDP on the layout, minimizing parking dimensions and drive aisle dimensions to get that as far away from the creek as possible. Um, we also work with them to make sure we have a stormwater management system that meets their current stormwater management standards. Uh, the last time we were here, if you remember, I'd got, we'd gotten Mass DEP comments probably a couple hours before the hearing. So I did submit new materials to Andy tonight that address those. Most of those comments were um, operation and maintenance related. So we've uh, included the full manufacturer maintenance for the water quality units we're using. They're more of a, a filter unit, so they're a little, little more maintenance involved than just a typical catch basin. Uh, we've added snow storage figures uh, that the DEP requested just to make sure we're not putting anything within 50 feet of like the riverfront unless it drains into a storm system where it can get treated. Um, and we also, we, I think I provided copies of the short-term sta uh, bank stabilization. I don't know if you all had copies of that last time. They're just, you know, obviously in the final condition we're going to plant native species that include ground covers, shrubs, and trees, but in the interim, depending on how much slope we uh, disturb, we'll do different type of treatments. Um, also, since the last time we were here, uh, the certificate for the environmental notification form was um, issued um, and indicated that there's no more review necessary under the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act. I think I'm um, just, in closing, before I take your questions, I'd just like to reiterate some of the benefits here. We are eliminating some parking and fencing, uh, eliminating over 30,000 square feet of impervious areas. We are actually providing mitigation areas uh, at a minimum of 10,250 square feet. So this will be um, to get rid of some of the in invasive and non-native species that are out there and provide native plantings. Uh, we're building a linear park along the front of Rear Beach Parkway open to the public. Um, also, we're increasing the open. There's a fence here today that maybe has a 40-foot opening, and that's going to be we're eliminating about another 150, 160 feet, feet. So we'll have more than a 200-foot opening there, and this will all be this will all be planted with a, like I said, native species. So better access to the creek. It'll look nicer. Obviously, we're going to have a safer, active, and well-maintained site. Uh, no more. Uh, dumping in the back or whatever, and part of our 
project does include removing the debris and trash that has accumulated in the back. Um, that includes removing stuff from in front of the head wall down there that's uh, minimizing some of its capacity. Uh, we're also, like I said, building a new stormwater management system that'll meet current regs. The existing site has system that doesn't work, and in some cases, no system. It just goes right to the creek. And lastly, this project is tied to a $3.6 million mass works grant that the city has, and this is to provide better access to the beach and to Beachmont Station, um, uh, provide new sidewalks that are accessible. Uh, the big thing is putting a traffic signal here. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this area, but there's a crosswalk here that you just have to risk it to run across because there's no pedestrian phase, there's no signal there for pedestrians to make that crossing. Another big thing for the Mass Works is we are replacing the 14 inch water main line in Winthrop Ave, and I think it's been repaired at least three times since I've been working on this project, so you guys might be aware of it on the local papers. Um, so those are, um, also lastly, I, we did, um, I did submit a letter where I responded to the comments that were embedded in the environmental notification form. A lot of those have been answered while we were working with MassDEP. Uh, the reviewers for the ENF didn't have a lot of our materials. They don't get the notice of intent. They got like 11 by 17 sheets and whatnot. So that was submitted too. So um, do you guys need anything to add? Or? Uh, OK, I was just lo looking at your plan for the uh, snow storage area. Uh, what's the closest distance to the bank on that? I believe I took, um, it was actually more than 50 feet from the existing bank because we have the mitigation area, so I offset it from that. The only time it's closer to the bank is if, it's, if, it, if it'll drain into the drain system, like, you know, so it's on the hotel side. And, oh, sure, what happened, what, uh, on the plan here, I specifically said there's going to be no stor snow storage in this I area. because yep. yep. In the, in, the, in the rest of the snow storage is actually over in these areas, so when the snow melts, it'll go into our drain system and go through the water quality units before going to Sales Creek. Who's the chair? Andy? Yes. Joe. Just a point of information, those spots you were just pointing to, those are parking spaces now. Oh, sorry, no, I'm uh, sorry, I'm trying to, I was trying to point to the, um, there's um, parking islands and some green spaces here that we'd be pushing the snow to, towards. If you open the package that has a, it's this first page, 205 the Red Beach Parkway. Operation and maintenance plan, long-term pollution prevention plan. It's the one I gave you tonight. Yep. And you can see areas along the parking lots that uh, uh, outline gray dashes. Okay. And if you look at the legend on the plan, on storage uh, plan, snow storage plan one, it shows those are snow, snow storage areas. So you have quite a few right along the parking, along the entrance, along parking again, behind the building, near the entrance, behind the other building, behind the residential building, behind the uh, hotel. Would those areas be signed? Snow storage area. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. How are you going to control snow storage? Well, I think you know, the I'm tendency to come in is somebody going to come in and they're going to plow the parking lot. Actually, I think I think what might be it might be better if we just um, we could sign maybe near the wall so people don't push it over the wall and maybe not near the area where they can't push it to and everything else could be fair game as long as it goes to the storm drain system. As opposed to showing where you can, maybe it'd be, you could do where you can't and it might be, you know, it might be a little more obvious because it's going to be, it's going to be down, down this area and on the, on the end, but so we can send something to you to look at and see if that's satisfactory. Yeah, that it is in the order I prepared okay. is uh, no dumping snow over the wall. 
and everything else, all the other surface drainage is captured by water quality units? Correct. There's, um, I think there's a, the only exception might be there might be little parts in the linear park that drain towards the street too, but I mean, we wouldn't be storing, we wouldn't be able to get the snow storage there anyhow, it'd be hard to get over there, so. In the uh, ENF certificate, it always also speaks to climate change and resiliency. Have you given that any thought? Yeah, I think we spoke about this before where we were going to, you know, most of our utilities are going to be resilient. We're not going to have, like, the transformer and the electrical is going to be high enough that it's not going to be in the flood zone. We, um, the front of the site is high enough that emergency vehicles can get in there during the 100-year flood. So we have thought about that. And the building is set um, six inches higher than the, than the base flood elevation. But I think the concerns uh, express that higher uh, elevations than the base flood elevation that it, it exists now. So will the building be flood proof to what elevation? Uh, well, I know it would be a minimum 11.5, and that's only to get to like the amenity areas, all the residents and the hotel units are on the second floor, so the actual, those things won't need to be. And, uh, Plus, we're in, the, we're in the still water portion of the floodplain, so I'm not sure that we'll, you know, there won't be wave action or anything. I think we've given ourselves a six-inch buffer. I think, that's a, I think that's one guess I've heard about the next 50 years, a six-inch sea level rise, so. You don't think at the base flood elevation of 11 that there won't be any wave action? Um, no. I don't, not at this site. I mean, well, I'm, going, I'm basing it on the, the FEMA maps, which are based on a flood study that used software I don't have available, and we're in the still water portion of it. Like, we're not, we're not in the wave part, we're not on the overwash part of, 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 of the ocean waves, so um, it basically speed the level. Just but it, isn't it elevation 11 right out to the ocean, right across Ocean Ave, right across the boulevard, once okay. you get to that elevation? According to the study, yes. Yeah, so I would think there would be some wave action. I'm going to say, I, I think, I think for FEMA study, they don't think the waves would promulgate all the way to this site, but, you know, that's theoretical calculations, of course. Yeah, that's what I would expect. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Member Lavalley? In, in regards to the, uh, the light that you were talking about going across the highway, do you request that from the DOT? Or, or how does that work? Oh, um, actually... It's part of the mass work experience. We're actually working with D DCR, and the, and the applicant will actually be the, the city of Brevere with us. And you requested, uh, are you, so you know this is going to happen then? That's not uh, something uh, that... Yeah, this, this project doesn't happen without that light either. We've kind of worked that out with DCR in the city. We just haven't done the official permit. And you yet. mentioned that's a pedestrian light. Is that correct? There's, um, yeah, these... Um, these pedestrian crosswalks will be added, and there'll actually be a push button, so there'll be a pedestrian phase where there's no cars going through and pedestrians can cross safely, yes. And so, in, on a regular basis, when there's no pedestrians crossing, it's, what, blinking? Oh, no, it's, um, no, it's, 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 a, it's a phase light, so it'll let, it'll let this left turn go through first, then it'll let uh, Revere Beach Parkway go in both directions, then it'll let Winthrop Ave on, so there'll be, there'll be the certain phases. It's existing signal at Winthrop Ave. And Winthrop and Revere Beach Parkway in front of Domino's. That's where Domino's is now. There's already lights there now, but there's no pedestrian. But there's no pedestrian phase to that light. I see. So, so they're going to add a pedestrian phase to it. To the existing. Uh, okay. And that's part of the Mass Works program that the city has received a grant. I don't know. Bob can probably tell us how much the grant is actually for. And that, that's been awarded. It's just a matter now of uh, designing the plans and getting them out to bid. Because it'll be separate from uh, this work. The work on the uh, project doesn't have to be prevailing wage, but the work on the mass works has to be prevailing wage. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Member Saboni? Okay, uh, you said uh, MEPA indicated no further MEPA review is required, but in the certificate they specifically asked for 
a lot of information. Some of it I see here, some of it I don't. Um, so in particular, um, it says Mass DEP and CZM recommend that the proponent explore alternatives to the retaining wall, such as a vegetated berm that will both decrease reflection and channelization of floodwaters onto adjacent properties and improve habitat value for Sales Creek. So where's that evaluation? That, that evaluation was done in the ENF, and we did, we did further evaluation on the um, DEP letter that we sent you, and we, 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 but we worked directly with DEP at, at their offices and gone over it. Um, what we've done is provided structured parking. All right, to, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm looking okay. for uh, something in writing. You're just yeah. telling me you worked with DEP. I don't oh, know. no, it's, it's, I, I, I submitted it the last time I was here. It was a, it was a memo to DEP from us indicating that we'd uh, looked at... Um, Structured parking, which wasn't economically feasible, feasible I'm not, except I'm not within the about principal structured structure. Parking. I'm talking about um, a vegetated berm versus a retaining wall. Yeah, and, it, and the vegetated berm wasn't feasible because it would actually it would actually take away a significant amount of the parking here, and we already have the parking at, at a minimum amount allowed. And um, the, if we went this way with the berm, we'd be disturbing more of Sales Creek, which the DEP was trying to have us avoid. Minimum amount of parking allowed based, based on what? Well, we are actually below the zoning minimum and the city wouldn't allow us to go lower than what we were actually asking for. I think we're at 1.2 for the residential, maybe a half for the hotel per unit. The comments from MassDOT ask you to evaluate other options uh, for parking. Can you elaborate on that, please? Well, that, that's what we did. They wanted us to see if we could do structured parking, but in this, in this market, we can't build a parking garage. It's not... In this market? In the, well, I mean, because the only place you can, you can build a, a, parking, a, a structured parking garage would be like Boston. I mean, when you get out in the suburbs, it's well, not economically feasible to build a parking structure, except we have built it within the principal structures where, where we could feasibly do it economically. And we did minimize the size of the spaces and the size of the drive aisles to squeeze the So it sounds like could. it's, it's um, impact to Sales Creek at the cost of making more money for the project. Uh, no, it's to, it's, well, it's to make the project feasible. And uh, the thing I should mention is that we are actually moving the development further away from Sales Creek than what's out there today. We're, uh, with this pavement today, we're pushing it in. There's some places where there is a portion where we are up against the existing fence, but in most cases, we're pulling the fence even further away from Seals Creek, so we're making it better as far as uh, disturbance today. Okay, so since, since you're improving Seals Creek so much, how do you, uh, you propose, as stated in the ENF certificate, to work with the City of Revere to support plans for additional cleanup and restoration efforts for Seals Creek, including providing access? Well, yeah, like, like I said before, we, um, we have committed to clean up all the service debris and things that are, that are gathered in front of the, the culvert. I think, if the, I think what that was saying is if the city came in and wanted to do a dredging project, which is beyond the scope of this, and would, I'm not sure anyone, I'm not sure DP would even want that right now, but we would, we would work with them and give them access to the site. We wouldn't uh, deny them a future improvement project. Why do you think TEP won't want that? Well they've, well, they've actually asked, well, cause when I was trying to do the outfalls, they didn't want me to go even past where the existing outfalls were. They, they didn't really want me going down the bank unless I had That's to. That's so you wouldn't trigger a, a, an Army Corps permit. Uh, that's not what they said to me. That's not what they told me, but um, in any event, um, and plus, I, I think um, we, don't, we, weren't, we don't have the money to actually go dredging the Sales Creek, if that's what you're asking. No, I'm, I'm looking for concerted effort to clean up the debris since you know you're mainly concerned with parking and we're mainly concerned with impacts to Seals Creek I, and cleanup of Seals Creek and chapter 91 although although the project is not located on landlocked tidelands and you're not subject to chapter 91 licensing you are required to seek a public benefits determination by the secretary and that's the hammer for any resident in the city of Revere who's listening right now. 
is to go to chapter 91 because that comes from the governor's office. So if you want to see improvements on this project and more green space, this is your opportunity to do it. Yeah, and we, yeah, and we, and we, and we are cleaning up the entire length of the creek and we are replanting along this bank here and in this mitigation area. Um, we just, I'm, the only thing I said we, we, we're falling short of is we're not doing a dredging project in the creek. Yeah, I'm not, no, no. I'm not yeah. looking for a dredging project. No, I think, I, think we, I think we're doing what you're asking. I think, we, I think we're, we're planting native species al along the bank, which is what you wanted to see, I believe. Has the proponents seen the comments from uh, was it, uh, Friends of Belle Isle Marsh? Friends of Belle Isle Marsh. Marsh. Have you seen those comments? Uh, yes, Andy, Andy passed them along to us. Okay, so do you, do you propose to address any of those comments? Well, actually, we, 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 we've, we've addressed all of them as, except for the, um, I, th I think there might be one there for, for access, but there's no way to actually build like a walkway through here because of, of, the, of, the, of the grades that are there today. But we are doing that. We are beating the stormwater management regs. They're really, they're really looking for um, water quality, which, which we're giving them. And there is better access to the creek. It's just not like a walk, it's not a formal walkway, though. To address one of uh, Member Saboni's concerns, I had put in miscellaneous conditions of the order I drafted that the pro proponents seek a public benefits determination by the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs pursuant to 310 CMR 9.02 and determine whether the project is subject to CZM Federal Consistency Review. So if we issue an order tonight, that's something you're going to have to do. Okay. Yep. yep and I've actually left messages with the CZM, CZM to go over it. So. Um, yeah. So as long as you can demonstrate uh, before it comes time for a certificate of compliance that you met that condition, you know, that's all I'm asking, as was recommended uh, by CZM. Yeah. So I think that's something you have to do anyhow. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? I prepared an order of conditions, uh, as I said. What is the will of the commission on this? I'll make a motion to issue the order of conditions. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Nick Belayson. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Adjourned at 7.23 p.m.